So when designing an electrical enclosure, sometimes you actually want to mount it to something. So in this video, we're going to talk about the different types of features that you can design directly into the part that were never possible before and can now be fully custom and just as reliable as any other alternative. So first of all, let's just go ahead and start with the enclosure itself. If you're designing an electrical enclosure to be manufactured with 3D printing, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you can print it on an edge, not flat down on a build plate. That really restricts volume and increases the cost of the part. Instead, put it up at a little angle and we will put a rib underneath it and print it like that. That creates a more uniform surface finish, better strength, and makes it more producible overall. And in order to do that, all you have to do is add a little or a big chamfer to the outer edge so that there's a flat surface for it to balance on. And of course, if you have any standoffs inside of the enclosure, please place a chamfer all the way around them. 3D printing does not care about volume. You can make a part as chunky as you want. It doesn't add significant material, but it adds a lot of strength and a lot more reliability. So those are the baselines for the enclosure itself. But now you want to mount it up to something. Well, there's a lot of different ways of doing this. Let's go ahead and start with one that's a little bit more eclectic and a little bit more surprising, a belt strap. Sometimes you might be doing an enclosure for like a camera mount or something that is going to be strapped to a pole where you just want to cinch it down. For this, you can just create a slot on the back of the enclosure. And with this, the only thing to be aware of is to make sure that this slot is parallel with the layer lines themselves, because the layers end up creating basically thousands of loops around that the belt can then go through. So it's very strong and very reliable. You don't have to worry about the layer lines delaminating, so long as the enclosure is printed in the correct orientation. So that's the easy one. Now, very often with electrical enclosures, you're putting them into some type of cabinet in industry. There's a lot of extrusion, there's a lot of dim rails. Since you're using 3D printing, you can now integrate those type of mounting features that might not have been native to the part before. They might have had to have been assembled or added onto the enclosure down the line somewhere. But here you can actually add them in the design itself. So you can make a dim rail mount or yeah, something for aluminum extrusion to where the enclosure actually slides together and fully joins with what it's gonna be mounted onto. And this is a really great opportunity because this would have radically increased the cost of molding. But with this, it's basically a free addition for a traditional type of enclosure if you're making it with 3D printing. Now on to the more standard types of mounts. A lot of people won't mount with dim rail mounts. They just wanna glue this thing to the wall. Of course you can glue it, you can tape it, you can command strip it, you can use all of those options. But holes very often end up being a popular option. If you're making holes in a 3D printed part, what you generally want to do is kind of reinforce those holes. So just make the area around them a little bit thicker than you normally would. And again, you'd wanna go as thick as you possibly can. If you have room to go in there, make it a freaking sprue inside of the box. But if you can just subtly add a couple of millimeters there, that reduces the stress concentration around those holes so you don't have to worry about breakout when somebody's putting the screw in or fatigue over time if the enclosure is in a high vibration environment. And those holes you can place anywhere you want inside the box. Again, it's really easy to add these customizations so that it aligns perfectly with your application and you don't have to do some drilling down the line. Now that's okay if you wanna access the screws inside of the box, but if you don't wanna remove the lid to get to the screws to remove the box, you might want tabs on the outside. Tabs are fine, but again, you want them to be as thick as possible. If you have steep overhangs somewhere, you wanna avoid those. So rather than doing just straight tongue tabs that stick straight out the outer side, make sure just to add a chamfer on the bottom edge of them so that they blend together with the part. Again, volume and adding material does not add much cost in 3D printing. It's not like injection molding where you have to try to strip everything down to as skeletal as possible. You can have big, chunky, lugubrious parts which look a lot better and are a lot more reliable for the process. Now, that's a traditional sort of tab, but what you really wanna do is rather than just having a flat tab that sticks out the side, is actually make a monolithic type of tab that kind of grows out the side. This one is merged into the part where you basically have this protrusion that you can then cut the hole into, and you can cut a relief into it, a countersink into it, and then cut the hole through, and now you have a really reliable mounting point that is super strong, and you don't have to worry about tabs breaking off after a couple of years of the box being used, mounted, or in a high vibration environment. Again, you can make this thick, chunky stuff that's really, really reliable. So hopefully that gives you some insights as to the ways of mounting electrical enclosures. Again, really the big thing is just make sure that you allow the enclosure to be printed on edge at an angle. And then once you decide on that angle, make sure that the mounting features align appropriately. Once you do that, you can make an enclosure that is as reliable as anything else out there. And now you're getting a full custom solution with no upfront tooling costs that is perfectly bespoke to what your client needs and what you need. Have a great day, everybody.